Hey, what's up? It's Caroline. Happy 2010 to everyone watching. Um, so I haven't made a video in a while. As I said in my last video, I'm in graduate school in a really rigorous program, so it's been difficult to focus on much else. Uh, but I just wanted to give a brief update, wish everyone a happy new year, and give a bit of a heads up on my upcoming videos. So, um, heads up on upcoming videos, I have had a lot of questions from folks over the last few months, so I will be making some videos responding to those questions and those topics, so stay tuned for those. And what else? Um, a personal update. Um, whew, so I hesitated on sharing some of these feelings. Um, maybe avoided even, maybe subconsciously that's part of why it took me so long to to really make this video and make an update because I can't really make superficial updates, so <laughs> I waited until I was in a space that I felt comfortable sharing um, just my personal update, and that is that um, I had a really tough time last semester with um, body image and with my recovery. I did not relapse. Um, I'm, you know, I've still been in full recovery now for over five years. But I did have some of the most difficult moments, hours, days, weeks, months I have had since I began my recovery uh, many years ago. And I wanted to talk about that um, and and share that in hopes that maybe that other people have felt that before and have been afraid to speak up about it or to give themselves permission to have those ebbs and flows and roller coaster times um, and also just like, be honest and authentic on my experience. So, so when I began my full recovery many years ago, I'd been, um, I had an eating disorder for 10 years, so age 11 to 21, and I had totally disordered eating before I was 11 um, and really bad body image issues as a kid. Uh, so, you know, I do feel that most of my life has been spent with some sort of body dysmorphia and negative body image and eating problems, whether, you know, I was in a period of specific diagnosis with an eating disorder or not. So, Throughout those 10 years of an eating disorder, there were periods where I claimed I was in recovery or I claimed I was, um, you know, never going to throw up again or never going to starve myself again. And and so when I say full recovery, I refer to when I made a conscious decision that throwing up was no longer an option. Um, and I made that decision, I guess it was November 2004 when I was in my junior year of college. Uh, and... And so since then, those are my boundaries within which I experience recovery, meaning if throwing up is not an option, no matter how crappy things get, no matter how much I feel like the only way to relieve myself of whatever I'm feeling is to binge and purge, um, that's not an option, which means that no matter, which means that whatever feelings I experience, I've made the decision that I am going to work through them in life and not use my eating disorder from my past as as the answer. So that said, um, I so I'm in this really tough graduate school program, um, and my family sold the house I grew up in, um, and I was so busy with school that I had very limited time to go back and help pack up and go through that transition with my family. And that was really hard on me. Um, my house was really my sanctuary growing up. But I also feel that um, because so much of my eating disorder happened in the house that I grew up in, um, I was all, also sort of like reliving a lot of those feelings and those experiences, just sort of emotionally, psychologically. So... Um, so, like, I guess it was really, like, end of October, November, maybe beginning of December, I had a lot of really trying times where um, I found myself having feelings I had not had in many, many years. 
where I wanted to throw up and I wanted to hurt myself. And because I have decided that it's not an option to do those things, I had to really confront some really painful feelings um, and some really negative thoughts about myself. Um, I was really hard on myself. And I wasn't binging, um, but I feel like there were like two or three weeks where I was not stopping eating when I was full. And I was bringing myself just beyond that comfort level of fullness so that I felt a little uncomfortable. And that, when I started doing it, that was my, that was the moment of like, oh, something's up. I really have to figure this out. And so what I did was I shared it with friends, um, friends that have also experienced eating disorders and are in recovery. Um, I have a lot, I'm fortunate to have a lot of friends that are social workers or in social work school, so that's really amazing when you, can turn to friends that are trained in this field. Um, uh, not some contact back with my therapist and just, you know, whom, I'm, whom I speak with on an as-need basis at this point. Um, but most importantly, like being really honest to myself and the people closest to me uh, with where I was at um, so that I felt like I was accountable to someone other than myself. Because if the people closest to me knew what I was going through, then um, I didn't feel as alone. And that's how I felt through a lot of my eating disorder was like, I think sometimes I turned to binging and purging when I experienced the same emotions I was experiencing, you know, a month ago. Um, I, in the past, I had turned to binging and purging because I figured I must be alone. And I was ashamed to express the feelings I was feeling. But when I... But this time around in my recovery, when I began confronting these issues to myself and to my friends, you know, that was, there was no longer any need to relapse, if that makes sense. I also realized that, that, a, that an eating disorder really is a mental illness. And I had this moment where I realized, oh, it's like it got inflamed, if that makes sense. It was like the the mental illness part of my brain that may never go away, but is mostly silent and quiet, got inflamed because I was so stressed and overwhelmed, and I dealt with the inflammation. Um, you know, if you if you hurt your leg and it becomes inflamed, you're going to get ice or a hot compress. You're not going to make it worse by poking at it, right? So it's sort of like when the eating disorder, mental illness thing gets inflamed, um, full-blown eating disorder is when you poke at it, you make it worse. You binge, you purge, you starve, you whatever. But um, what I chose to do was to let the inflammation go down. And that worked by not making it worse, not poking at it, but instead acknowledging that it was there uh, accepting it, having compassion for that inflammation, and being really patient with myself. And I did those things, and I didn't relapse, and and I feel really good about myself, and I'm starting to find my center again, and I'm starting to feel the way I did about food and my body before, you know, this tough time happened. And, and it was a matter of being patient, persevering, and and having perspective. Having perspective about the situation, having patience with myself, and persevering beyond this inflammation, if you will. So I hope that's helpful to people. Um, if anyone else has ever experienced any moments like that, feel free to share. Uh, so what I learned was, you know, I... I've decided that relapsing is not an issue and not an option. Not an option, really. It is an issue, but it's not an option for me. And that meant, like, really confronting some painful emotions, which I guess I thought before this happened that I would never have to worry about my eating disorder again. And maybe that's what's most important to share, that, like, oh, I'm I'm not <laughs> immortal, <laughs> Of course I'm going to have to confront these issues. 
It's about how you confront them. Someone recently asked me in a message on YouTube, um, like, if I'm worried about what I eat. And I said, no, I'm not worried about what I eat. I pay attention to how I eat. Uh, and I think that's the change, right? So I've learned that I can't be worried about whether or not I'm going to have some, like, difficult moments throughout my life regarding body or food. It's a matter of how I'm going to deal with them. And I would like to deal with them the same way I just dealt with them, which is being patient with myself and very honest. Hope that helps. And stay tuned for upcoming videos.